Picture this. It's 1972, and a young Swedish engineer is staring at a chessboard in his Stockholm office. He's not playing a game. He's designing a fighter jet. While America was building the F-16 like a powerful knight charging straight into battle, Sweden was creating something different, something that would move like a chess grandmaster, calculating precise, always three moves ahead. Today, 50 years later, that Swedish philosophy has evolved into the grip in E, and it's challenging everything we thought we knew about air superiority. The F-16 Fighting Falcon has been the backbone of Western air power for decades, but Sweden's grip in E is proving that sometimes the smartest fighter isn't the strongest one. This isn't just about two jets. This is about two completely different philosophies of warfare, and the future of air power hangs in the balance. Let me tell you a story that perfectly captures the difference between these two aircraft. During the Cold War, American generals looked at the Soviet threat and said, we need a fighter that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anything they throw at us. So they built the F-16, a scrappy street fighter, tough as nails, ready to duke it out in any alley. But Swedish military planners were thinking differently. They looked at their long coastline, their scattered islands, and said, what if we don't fight fair? What if we're smarter instead of stronger? They designed the Gripen like a master spy, able to operate from highway strips, disappear into forests, and strike when the enemy least expects it. Think of it like this, the F-16 is Muhammad Ali, powerful, aggressive, willing to take hits to land the knockout punch. The Gripen E is Bruce Lee, smaller, faster, using the opponent's strength against them. Both are legends, but they represent completely different approaches to winning a fight. And here's where it gets interesting. In today's world of advanced missiles and electronic warfare, being Bruce Lee might be more important than being Muhammad Ali. Now, let's talk about what these philosophies mean in real numbers. Because in aviation, physics doesn't lie. The F-16 Block 70 is like a seasoned marathon runner. It can cruise at Mach 2, carry 17,000 pounds of weapons, and has the endurance to keep fighting long after others have gone home. But here's where the Gripen E pulls its first surprise. It can supercruise at Mach 1.25 without afterburners. Think of it like the difference between a muscle car that roars down the highway burning gas and a hybrid that glides silently past you while getting better mileage. The Gripen E can sneak up on targets while the F-16 announces its arrival from 50 miles away. The operating costs tell an even more interesting story. Flying an F-16 for one hour costs about $8,000, like driving a luxury sports car. The Gripen E? About $4,700 per hour, more like a well-engineered German sedan. Over a 20-year service life, that difference could buy you an entire squadron of additional aircraft. But raw numbers only tell part of the story. The real difference lies in how these jets think. Here's where our story takes a fascinating turn. The F-16 was designed in an era when pilots were the ultimate decision makers, like skilled craftsmen who relied on experience and instinct. The latest Block 70 F-16s have been upgraded with modern computers, but it's like putting a smartphone brain into a rotary phone body. The Gripen E, on the other hand, was born digital. Its computer systems don't just help the pilot, they think alongside them. Imagine having Sherlock Holmes as your co-pilot, constantly analyzing threats, predicting enemy moves, and suggesting the optimal response. That's what the Gripenese sensor fusion system does. Here's a story that illustrates this perfectly. During a recent NATO exercise, a Gripen E pilot described his experience like this. I felt like I was playing a video game where I could see through walls. The aircraft systems had integrated data from ground radars, other aircraft, and satellites to create a complete picture of the battlefield that no F-16 pilot has ever experienced. But the most impressive part, the Gripen E can share this godlike awareness with every other aircraft in its formation. It's like having a telepathic connection with your wingmen. The F-16, for all its upgrades, still communicates like we did in World War II through radio calls and hand signals. Now let me share a story that every military mechanic will appreciate. My grandfather worked on P-51 Mustangs during World War II, and he used to say, a fighter that can't fly isn't a fighter at all. This wisdom becomes crucial when we compare these two aircraft. The F-16 was designed like a classic American muscle car, powerful, reliable, but requiring a full garage and a team of specialists 
to keep it running. An F-16 needs about 19 hours of maintenance for every hour it flies. That's like having a race car that needs a complete tune-up after every trip to the grocery store. The Gripen E takes a completely different approach. It's designed like a Swiss watch. Everything is engineered for simplicity and reliability. It needs only 10 hours of maintenance per flight hour, and here's the kicker. Much of that maintenance can be done by the pilot themselves, right on the flight line. Picture this scenario, it's wartime, and your airbase gets hit by enemy missiles. The F-16 squadron is grounded because their specialized maintenance equipment was destroyed. But the Gripen E pilots, they're back in the air within hours, having performed basic maintenance with tools that fit in a pickup truck. This isn't just about convenience, it's about survival in modern warfare, where your fancy airbase might not exist tomorrow. Here's where our story reaches its climax, and it involves a concept that would have seemed like science fiction to those 1970s engineers. Modern warfare isn't about individual knights charging into battle anymore. It's about orchestras, where every instrument must play in perfect harmony. The F-16, even in its latest incarnation, is like a talented soloist. It can put on an impressive performance, but it's essentially playing alone. The Gripen E, however, was designed from the ground up to be part of a symphony. Its data link system can coordinate with everything from ground troops to satellites, creating a web of information that makes the entire force more effective. Let me paint you a picture of what this means in practice. Imagine a chess game where the F-16 player can only see their own pieces, while the Gripen E player can see the entire board including pieces that haven't even been moved yet. That's the advantage of true network-centric warfare. During the Cruzex exercise in Brazil, something remarkable happened. A Gripen E pilot managed to defeat an F-15 Eagle in beyond visual range combat, not through superior speed or weapons, but through superior information. The Gripen E pilot knew exactly where the F-15 was, while the F-15 pilot was essentially flying blind. And here's what keeps American Air Force generals awake at night. This isn't just about Sweden anymore. Countries around the world are choosing the Gripen E specifically because it offers capabilities that even the latest F-16s simply cannot match. As we near the end of our story, we need to address the elephant in the room. The F-16 is like a beloved family patriarch, respected, experienced, with a track record that spans generations. It has flown in more conflicts, protected more allies, and proven itself in ways the Gripen E simply hasn't had the chance to do. But here's the hard truth every military planner must face. We're not preparing for yesterday's wars. The threats of tomorrow, hypersonic missiles, advanced electronic warfare, swarm attacks, require a different kind of thinking. The Gripen E represents that new thinking, while the F-16, for all its upgrades, is still fundamentally a 1970s design trying to fight 2020s battles. So which philosophy wins, proven warrior or the digital native? The answer might surprise you. The future of air power isn't about choosing between the F-16 and the Gripen E. It's about understanding what each represents. The F-16 shows us the power of proven design and continuous improvement. The Gripen E shows us what's possible when you start fresh with modern threats in mind. But this generational battle isn't limited to fighter jets. The same revolution is happening in every corner of military aviation. From attack helicopters to reconnaissance aircraft, the old guard is being challenged by newcomers who think differently about warfare. Speaking of this old versus new battle, there's an even more explosive showdown happening happening right now in the Pentagon. America's Air Force and Navy are locked in the most expensive argument in aviation history. $20 billion fight over six-generation fighters. Next week, I'm breaking down the F-47 versus FAXX budget battle that's tearing apart American air power. And trust me, what's happening behind closed Pentagon doors will shock you. Which fighter would you choose to defend your homeland? The proven F-16 or the revolutionary Gripen E? Let me know in the comments below and tell me why.